Have you heard the term science of reading and wondered what it means? It's showing up in more schools, state policies, and even in headlines, but it's not always explained clearly. Let's take a closer look. The science of reading is not a program, product, or new teaching trend. It's a large and growing body of research from multiple fields, education, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, and linguistics. For decades, researchers have studied how the brain learns to read, why some students struggle, and what teaching strategies work best. One of the most important things to know is that reading is not something we are born knowing how to do. Unlike speaking, which develops naturally through exposure, reading must be taught directly. That's where the science of reading comes in. It tells us how to teach reading in ways that align with how the brain actually learns. So what does this research tell us? There are five essential components that form the foundation of effective reading instruction. Phonemic awareness, the ability to hear and manipulate individual sounds called phonemes in spoken words. For example, being able to break the word dog into the sounds d, a, g. Phonics, teaching students how letters and groups of letters represent those sounds. Phonics helps students crack the code of written language by sounding out words. Fluency, reading words accurately, quickly, and with expression. Fluent readers can focus more on understanding the text rather than decoding each word. Vocabulary. Knowing the meaning of a wide range of words. A strong vocabulary supports reading comprehension and writing skills. Comprehension. The ultimate goal of reading. Understanding, connecting with, and thinking critically about what you've read. In the past, many reading programs use what's called a balanced literacy approach. That method often included leveled books, sight word memorization, and teaching kids to use pictures or context to guess unknown words. But research shows these strategies don't give all students the tools they need, especially struggling readers or those with learning differences like dyslexia. That's where the science of reading differs. Instead of encouraging guessing, it teaches students how to decode words based on letter-sound relationships. Instruction is explicit, directly taught, and systematic, following a logical order. Skills build over time so students become confident and independent readers. This approach also uses decodable texts, books that match the phonics patterns students have already learned. For example, if a student has learned short vowels and consonant blends, they might read a decodable book with sentences like, the frog jumps in the pond. These texts help kids apply what they've learned rather than relying on guessing. You might be wondering, why is the science of reading becoming more visible now? This shift is part of a larger movement that responds to decades of debate in education, often referred to as the reading wars. One side emphasized phonics-based instruction. The other promoted whole language or balanced literacy approaches, which leans more on exposure to books and reading strategies. Now, thanks to decades of research and national reading scores showing that many students are reading at a grade level, more states and districts are embracing the science of reading. Some states have passed laws requiring schools to use evidence-based practices, retrain teachers, or adopt approved reading curricula. This movement is about equity, too. When we understand how reading works in the brain, we can make sure all students, regardless of background or learning style, get access to instruction that actually works. So what does this mean for parents? It means you can become an advocate. Ask your school what reading methods are being used. 
Are students being taught phonics explicitly? Are they using decodable texts? Are struggling readers getting the support they need? And for teachers, it means revisiting what we've been taught, staying curious, and embracing tools that align with how children learn best. It's not about placing blame, it's about moving forward with what we know now works. When families and educators work together, armed with evidence and empathy, we can give every child the chance to become a strong, joyful reader. Thanks for joining us. For more information and resources related to the science of reading, head to twinkle.com.